what is happening in the professional bass fishing tournament world with infractions and disqualifications. That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. So over the last couple of years, we've seen more infractions and disqualifications for really some crazy things and some not so crazy things. Some are excusable, some are drastically unexcusable and are the angler's fault. And some might say it's almost a little part of cheating. But because anglers pay to play and they try to skirt the gray area as much as possible, sometimes infractions happen. And as anglers, they have to police themselves and the others. Sometimes it comes back and bites them in the ass. But really, should it? If someone is policing their own and that person is doing something wrong, they shouldn't feel the repercussions for their honesty and integrity. But at what point do we say, okay, enough is enough? And a majority of these infractions and disqualifications are unconscious, but some are conscious. And they are mistakes that anglers are making because they're just not either paying attention to the rules or they're just not thinking about what they're doing. Now, first off, I'm gonna be honest. I make a ton of mistakes. I say people's names wrong. I try to get the information as correct as possible for I do this video, but there are times I'm wrong. I don't mind being wrong. I don't mind you saying, oh, Steve, you did made this mistake or you did this, but do it politely. Tell me how I did it wrong and I try to make the, don't make that mistake anymore but saying that someone is perfect would be a lie and you need to own up to your mistakes and in most cases the anglers that we're gonna talk about today own up to their mistakes and recently there's been a lot of mistakes just recently Scott Martin admitted after his video posted that he had made a mistake by fishing an area that he wasn't allowed to and a lot of people comment it isn't fair that his day two weights got disqualified and the reason they got disqualified is because he fished an area that was out of of bounds. Now I realize it didn't have any no fishing signs but in the rules it says there's a, a particular area that is a wall and if you fish it you, your weight is disqualified and the reason for that is is because they can't tell which fish was caught there and if you can't tell which of the five was caught there you just have to disqualify the whole day and it does stink because Scott lost money he lost a lot of points and he felt embarrassed as he said personally on his last video but it brings to question that if someone didn't see his video or every fish that was caught during that tournament wasn't put in his video if he would have known that that mistake happened he had a marshal with him even the marshal didn't know that the area that was not supposed to be fished but that video really cost Scott and his team $2,500 in points next on the St. John's Trey McKinney has taken a lot of heat and and Gerald Swindle confronted Trey on an area he ran that was a no wake zone. Now this was again an area that was not marked and while they did say it in the video that the the anglers have to watch before they go it was someplace that he didn't know and a lot of veteran anglers did know about it and Gerald confronted Trey. Now give it up to Gerald for confronting Trey but there's both sides were wrong while Trey was wrong for running that no motor that no wake zone. How Gerald handled the situation situation can be kind of can you can kind of go both ways in since doing that first video I've had a lot of media people and other people who've called me or texted me or commented to me about really what the situation happened and it was kind of said that maybe Trey got a little upset and rightfully so because he was confronted and kind of backed into a corner with Gerald but I think also there's a time and place to talk to somebody instead of doing it in front of media and Gerald should have done that but here nor it's here nor there. Trey served his penalty and it was a 90 minute penalty. And there was actually two people that ran that zone supposedly or allegedly. And both people were had a penalty of 90 minutes. Ben Milliken is another one. He lost 60 minutes at the Classic this year. And that 60 minute penalty cost him an area to go fish, just like it did for Trey. I do think that Trey did amazing on the St. John's, but I think if he was at his spot a little bit earlier, he might've been even higher in the points. And there's a lot of people that don't like this new crop of rookies that have come in because they're all live scopers or they're doing things differently but quite honestly you might not like or dislike forward facing sonar but all the anglers that are out there have had the same amount of time to learn this technology either they've learned it and have moved to doing well or else they haven't and they're on the bottom of the list and while I know there's lots of people that like to say I don't think they can catch them without forward facing sonar and some might be right but these anglers are are exceptional rookies this year. This, I believe, is the best crop of rookies to ever join the elites. 
Next, just recently, Lake Murray. We're going to talk about two people. Cole Sands is the first one. He had his day one disqualified because he didn't have a fishing license. Now, this is where I think that area needs, the gray area needs to be cut in stone. I think if you don't have a fishing license, then you shouldn't be able to fish day two or that tournament. Not to mention, I think if you don't have your fishing license before or during that tournament, that there should be repercussions down the line for it. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from Cole. I think it was probably a stupid mistake. But as anglers, and you're going to a different place or you're going to on vacation, the first thing we all do is we get a fishing license. We all do it. And I think as a professional angler, you need to be above us weekend warriors. You need to set an example and set the standard for what you do. And while I understand Cole made a mistake and paid for it in his day one being disqualified, I do think there's repercussions that could happen later on down the line. And NPFL angler Baron Adams won an event, won $100,000, and then had the whole thing disqualified because he forgot to do his fishing license. Here's the, the situation here, and of course this is alleged. Supposedly he went and bought his fishing license and didn't click all the way through to pay it. And that can happen, I guess. But if you're going to go fishing someplace, you need to make sure you have your fishing license. And if Baron can win an event, even with MPFL, Baron's going to have a great, Baron's going to have a great career because there's still amazing anglers fishing over there and and to win one event just shows how good of an angler he is. And I'm sure he'll do great in his career. But that doesn't forgive him for making a $100,000 mistake. An angler should have their fishing license before, during, and after. And unfortunately, there are states that have reciprocal states. And that means that if you get a ticket from a game warden or someplace in this state, it'll have effects on another state. And luckily for Cole, and I think Barron, it didn't have any effect on them. But two guys that should have their fishing licenses for every place before they put their boat in the water. No questions asked. I know it's a conscious, unconscious, stupid mistake. That one's a really stupid mistake in my opinion. And there's allegations all the time of anglers hooking a fish that aren't in the mouth when they're sight fishing. I can't tell you the amount of people that ask me to look into the Corey Johnston fish on day four uh, at the St. John's because what happens is the, when you're sight fishing, you need to hook the fish in the mouth. And the way around that is, is you unhook your fish looking forward and you don't show the marshal or the boat camera boat person. And these are just allegations. So these little things are constantly happening on all tours that are pay to play. And we haven't even really gone into the boat crash, which is just unbelievably stupid. And my take on this is because anglers pay to play and they want to win as much as possible, the competitiveness out on bass fishing is outrageous. I mean, how many times have you gone out with your friend and you might not even say anything, but the goal is to beat your friend in how many fish you catch. Imagine paying $5,000 to go out there and fish and you want to beat everybody. Having that pay to play is a problem that is happening in this industry and it's happened for since the start. But is there a way around it? I don't know. I really don't know. And I think there's a lot of anglers that skirt the gray areas. There's a lot of anglers that are very professional and don't want to do that, don't want to know the rules in and out and aren't trying to skirt those gray areas. And I commend those, but it comes back down to those anglers that are willing to skirt the gray areas, not get fishing licenses or run zones or do any of that stuff. You might not know it, but it is breaking the rule. And if there's a rule broken, we need to police it and make it correct. But there needs to be a level play playing field on what is what. Now, not having your fishing license is drastically different than having going through a no mo awake zone. Also, it's drastically different than fishing without a fishing license. I do believe both all three incidences are horrible. Like Scott having his weight disqualified, it makes sense to me anyway, because you don't know what fish is which, so you have to disqualify the whole day. I think not having a fishing license and going fishing is just stupid. I think you should just be disqualified for that whole tournament. I think that's just the line. That's the line. I think that if you're policing someone or, and, and yourself, that you shouldn't catch any grief for policing yourself and others because there are times that anglers make mistakes. I think if you go through a no wake zone and you decide to run it, there should be a penalty of 90 minutes. Or if you've done something like Ben Milliken, which we don't even know, and he got a 60 minute penalty. But they need to be fair on both sides. And I think they have been fair. I think the one problem I have with these issues is that we don't find out about them till weeks and weeks after. 
after they've happened. We kind of can find out, well, maybe the guy didn't have a good day. It just says zeros. It doesn't say disqualify. I know that when my son goes to a swim meet and he does something wrong, a turn or false starts, it says DQ'd. And we can find out exactly why he was DQ'd immediately afterwards. And it's transparent on what you did wrong. I think Bass and Major League Fishing and the other organizations out there need to be more transparent on why things happen, why this infraction happened, why this person was disqualified, instead of finding out secondhand or third hand from other people that might not know exactly what it is. And getting the media to find out or find out what happened is kind of hard. And you have to take one person's word over another. And sometimes there's people that don't like other people. The McKinney swindle ordeal. You could go both ways on that, to be honest. Knowing what I know now, I almost side a little bit more with Trey because I think it was handled it was handled wrong by Gerald and how he approached Trey. I think that there, there's two sides to every story and be nice to know the story, even though it could be embarrassing for the angler because they got disqualified or they had to have a penalty. It would be nice to have more transparency on what's going on. What do you think? Should there be more transparency? Should there be a level playing field for all these guys? Is policing wrong? You tell me in the comments below. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I will talk to you very soon. Thank you and cheers.